What's going on guys? Bustle Basics here back from another video and today, well, it's that time of month folks for another retrospective of the Metal Month. And this time I'm doing another that I consider the Juice Priest of Doom Metal Candlemas. Now, for those of you who are wondering, why Candlemas? Why not St. Vitus, Trouble, or Pentagram? Well, honestly, this band is a bit more successful than them. And honestly, they're just very consistent with just how much they have involved over the years. And for those assholes are saying, Oh, isn't that the same band that just writes the same riff in albums over and over? <laughs> no, asshole. You write, you listen to the same album over and over again. So let's just slap them heads off and grab your swords and grab your shields and join me as we go on this doomy atmospheric adventure of Candlemas. Now... A little bit of backstory. This band formed in the Lord and Savior Stockholm in 1984 by bassist, songwriter, and song uh, and, uh, and band leader Leif Edling and drummer Mats Ekstrom. After breaking up his first band nemesis, Edling formed Candlemas with session, gu session vocalist Johan Lenquist, guitarist Mats Mappi Bjorgman, and Klaus Bergwald with the powers combined. They went to the record studio in 1986 to record their debut album, Epicus Dumicus, or yes, Epicus Dumicus Metalicus. Now, I've already reviewed this album actually on one of my random album reviews. And my thoughts have really not changed on this album. This is one of the best debut albums I've ever heard, and one of the best debut albums of all time. Now, for those of you who are saying why I consider this band the Judas Priest of Doom Metal, well, Black Sabbath have just embraced us all with its just ungodly, just creepiness of its uh, self-titled. Then this is the Sad Wings of Destiny of that album. This is an absolutely perfect album, in my opinion. It's not my favorite album, but... This album was just absolutely amazing. From the opening somber of Solitude, it's a live staple. It's an absolute classic to this day. Demon's Gate, Blackstone Wielder, Under the Oak. But my favorite has to go to Crystal Ball. It seems a bit somewhat generic in the outset, but hey, this ain't, that's not a bad thing. That is a catchy as hell song. Not a whole lot of substance because there was like six tracks, but... This is a hell of a debut album, folks. If you ever see it on the store shelves, don't hesitate, buy it. But unfortunately, after this album, Lindquist was replaced by Messiah McCollin. By the time they recorded their second album, Bergwald and Ekstrom left and was replaced by uh, Jan, uh, Jan Lindhen on drums and Lars Johansson on guitars. They signed with Access Records after being dropped by Black Dragon Records because, unfortunately, this album didn't really sell as much, or uh, Epicus didn't really sue, uh, sell as much. So then, they went back to the recording studio in 1987 to record Nightfall. This is a more than worthy successor to its predecessor. In some ways, it's about better than Epicus, but as a date, as a... New vocalists for Messiah. This is a strong, strong, strong album. Uh, well of Souls is an absolute amazing song. Death are the veils of uh, dark are the veils of death. More, more's uh, lament. Gallows End is a life staple to this day. Uh, Samar Samarathan. But my favorite has to be the absolute classic of You Are Bewitched. Absolute classic song that was actually covered by Abysmal Dawn, actually. And <clears throat> it features one of the goofiest uh, music videos where the guys are just doing, they're just doing it like this. It's stupid, it's silly, but I absolutely love it. And not to mention that, uh, that album cover, amazing. So overall... Very, very, very damn good, damn good stuff. I would prefer Epicus a little bit, just by a pew pair, only because the atmosphere is a bit stronger on that album. But don't, don't misinterpret what I'm saying here, folks. This is still a kick-ass album. It's not my favorite of the Messiah McCollum albums, but 
we'll get to that here in a little bit. So, since they're busy as hell and torn their asses off, one year goes by and they went back to the recording studio in 1988 to record Ancient Dreams. This is another great, great, great album. It's a, it's a bit weaker than Nightfall, but in some ways, it's about better than Nightfall. You have Cry from the Crypt, Darkness and Paradise. The title track is absolutely magical. Incarnation of Evil. But my favorite has to be the murderous Mirror Mirror. And I should mention, the guitar tone somehow got heavier. Like, I don't know what the hell that they did, but somehow that guitar tone... Ooh, good lord, that can just shave Tony's, Tony Iommi's stash clean off his face with how thick that guitar tone is. But yeah, overall, a bit... Just a smidge weaker, a smidge weaker, but this is still a damn good album. So, again, touring as always, and they went back into the recording studio in 1989 to record Tales of Creation. This is their best album with Messiah up until this point. Yes, there's another Messiah album I like a little bit more than this. Again, some of the guitar tone is a bit heavier. Like, this is probably their heaviest album up until this point. You have, again, great songs. of Tale of Creation, Edge of Heaven, Somewhere and Nowhere, Unto the Unfathom Towers, basically speed metal in the first section, and then it gets into, like, power metal in the second section. Tears, Dark Reflections. But my favorite track is Through the Infinitive Halls of Death. First of all, that is a badass song title. And second, good lord of that atmosphere. I feel like I got I was being watched while listening to that song. Amazing song. My favorite album up until that point with Messiah McCollum. And yeah, just overall another fantastic, fantastic album. But unfortunately, this relationship did not last long. 1990 recorded their live album, Live. And shortly after, there was tension within the band that would eventually lead to Messiah's departure in 91. So then, they got in Thomas Wickstrom. And then, back, and then they went into the studio in 1992 to record Chapter 6. This is a different album. Um, production, it's a bit weak, I would say. Um, it doesn't feel... I wouldn't say it feels as heavy because it still feels heavy, but not as like, like massive like the previous albums. It feels a bit more groove oriented. This is a bit more groove oriented, kind of groove doom if that's even a thing. And Thomas Fixstrom has a different vocal approach, but he still does a pretty damn good job on this album. The uh, the uh, and. And Bonnie Throne, Temple of the Dead, Black Eyes, The Dying Illusion. Good lord, that song's a barn murder. But my favorite is Where the Ruins Still Speak. Just that, that opening, that ending, and that bridge in the middle is just... Ooh, that, that is a just a glorious, glorious album. Overall, Chapter 6, still a good album. It's just, if you had to twist my arm... I would probably rank it a little bit lower because considering what we were going to go after this, it's like the worst album in the band's discography. So, while on tour and support of this album, 94, they eventually split because, well, it was unsuccessful. And Ned Ling formed a side project, Abstract Algebra, but due to lack of success, he reformed Candlemass with a different lineup with Bjorn uh, Fluquist, on vocals, Michael Ahmet for those of you Carcass fans on guitar, Carl Hol Westholm on keyboards, and G. Joe Perkovic, Perkovic on drums. If I butcher any of these names, by the way, I sincerely apologize. And then that will lead us into 1998, and they would release Dialectus Glomerata. This is my least favorite album. 
This is where they experimented a little bit on this album. Instead of straightforward doom, they kind of incorporated some stoner rock elements. Frankly, it's not for me. And I'm not saying because I don't like stoner, stoner doom metal. I enjoy it. it. Just, this doesn't feel like a Candlemas album. It feels like if Trouble and Corrosion of Conformity decided to make an album. Like, that's what I feel like this album is. But with that being said, there's some good songs like The Wiz, Dust Flow, Abstract Sun. My favorite track, Apathy, though, that's just got a really eerie atmosphere. It's just, this album just feels a bit off. Like, 99 and, 9, and 98 especially, this was a bad time to be basically a heavy metal album, metal band in general, like, Slayer, like the thrash bands were starting to go into groove metal. Death metal was starting to go groove metal. Black metal was still hitting their stride in the 90s, but they were still stumbling. I, I've even said on my uh, Ice Earth retrospective that power metal was starting to sh like thrive throughout the 90s, but a lot of the old guard have fallen down. And unfortunately, Candle Mesh joined them. Again, it's not a bad album. Hell, I like all these albums. Candle Mesh don't really have a bad album. This album is just not for me. So yeah. My least favorite, but it's still enjoyable. So for the next album, Michael would leave and was replaced by Mutt Stull on lead and rhythm guitar and Carl will be on synthesizers. And then in 1998, we get From the 13th Sun. This is a bit better than Dialectus only because it's... A bit more fun. The songs are a bit more fun. And by the way, if I'm saying that um, album wrong, it also stands for Cat Grass. Yeah, that should have told you how the band was thinking about that time. Dactylus. I think that's what it is. Dactylus. I think I, 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 how do I, how do I speak again? But anyways, back to this album. Again, the songs are a bit more fun. Like Droid is absolutely beast of a song. Blew my opt. Tots a really cool, really cool jam. There's some good riffs here and there, and there's some pretty interesting songs. But again, not enough substance. It feels a bit generic, a little bit uninspired. But I still enjoy it a little bit more than uh, uh, Deckless, only because the songs are a bit more fun. But not a terrible album. Again, it's... It's okay at best. That's that's what I'll say. It's okay at best. So then in No. 2, past members of the uh, of Candle Mass would reunite, playing shows and recording live albums. While working on a new album, they were looking for a new label when differences rose again and they broke up again. In the meantime, Evelyn formed uh, Crooks, which is another uh, Swedish new metal band, involving Mots Levin, who... You'll mention it. Uh, I'll be mentioning his name again. Who used to be in Ingve Malmsteen's solo career. And two members of Entombed. Yes. And two members of Entombed joined Candlemass. What is this world? And then in a later four, they eventually reunited again. And then that will lead us into 2005. We get the self titled album. This is my favorite album with Messiah McCall and on vocals. This album, they brought the doom back and they brought the heavy. And good God in heaven, this album is heavy as shit. Just instantly from the opening badass battery ram of Black Dwarf. The guitar tone is thick and crunchy and crisp and it sounds like it's going to sever your head off. Brutal, brutal, brutal out, a brutal track. Assassin of the Light, the man who fell from the sky is one of the best instrumentals in the band's career. Witches, Assassin of the Light, the day and the night. But my favorite has to be just the beast of Born in the Tank. That thrashy chug and just those, those god insane riffs are just absolutely insane. My favorite album with Messiah, and after listening to this album, I did not think it can get any, excuse me, any heavier than this. 
But boy, was I ever wrong. And this was my favorite album up until this point. So then, they won a Swedish Grammy for this album. And then, in 06, they, a new album was in the works, but again, Messiah was out for good due to some creative differences. Enter Solitude Eternus, Robert Lowe. And then, in 2007, they will record King of the Grey Islands. This is my favorite Candlemas album. And this is my favorite Rob Lowe album. What is with new vocalist named Rob being the heaviest era of a band's career? This and Exodus. Literally, I can't tell which one is heavier. This album is just booming with just insane 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 just guitar melodies if melodies is even a word just brutal riffs insane breakdowns devil's seed of smoke and of stars and smoke dumana six destroyer man of shadows embracing the sticks clear sight but my favorite maybe my favorite candle mass song Emperor of the Void. Just that chorus, that insane, insane solo. The riffs are insane. The drumming is brutal. Amazing song. Fantastic album. My favorite Candlemas album and my favorite Rob Lowe album. So then, in March of 07, they celebrated 20 years, though it was slightly delayed. And also to celebrate, they got original singer, uh, Johan Lindquist to appear live. But unfortunately, a year later, Moppy was arrested for stealing over 35,000 CDs and DVDs priced around 3 million sec or $500,000. He eventually served two years. And the band, were while working on their 10th album, was literally titled Hammer Doom, but changed to Death Magic Doom due to it being coincided with the German festival. Also, around this time, they recorded the Lucifer Rising EP. So, that was released in 2009's Death Magic Doom. Another great album. Another great album with Rob Lowe. I will say this is a bit weaker than King of the Scr uh, King of the Grey Islands. I'm Keep trying to say King of the Grey Skulls for some reason, but King of the Grey Islands. However, this album is just amazing. If I Ever Die, The Bleeding Baroness, Demons of the Deep, which is like kind of Lovecraftian horror, Dead Angel, Class of Dementia, My Funeral Dreams. But my favorite has to be the song that was originally titled to be the title track, Hammer of Doom. Just amazing amazing track it's very mellow at the beginning and then once that breakdown hits it is just ooh, ooh, hammer to doom oh my god that that song is absolutely brutal rob lowe's vocals is kind of like a mixture of ripper owens without the halford screams and kind of a mixture of tony martin and if they had somehow made a weird love child that would be rob lowe a just amazing, amazing song. Another great album. Though a little bit weaker than King of the Grey Islands, I still really enjoy this album. So then in 09, Evelyn told Sound, Sound Shook that they would be working on a new album, hopefully before 2011. However, it was pushed back to 2012 due to the 25th anniversary of their t uh, of uh, Epicus Dumicus uh, Medicus, and they wanted to focus on that. And then in October of uh, 2011, they, say, they uh, signed with Napalm Records. So that leads into 2012's Psalms for the Dead. Great album. Probably my least favorite of the Rob Lowe era, but still a fantastic album. Just great, great, great stuff here. The title track, uh, The Lights of Thebe, Water Witch, Dancing of the Temple of the Mad Queen Bee, but my favorite track has to be The Sound of Dying Demons. I would have also gone with Time is Black, but my only gripe with that song is 
it was a spoken word and it kept going throughout the entire song so it kind of just took me out of it but whenever it did get like it took away from the um instrument or from the spoken word it's kind of got a great chug kind of thrashy and it's a it's an awesome song it's just that if it if it had the spoken word at the beginning and then it just transferred into the song, then that would have been a great, great way to end it. But don't let, don't let me, you know, ruin that feeling for you. This is still a fantastic album. It's just my least favorite, but it's still a fantastic album. So on June 2nd of 2012, Low would lead you to the quality of live performances. So his replacement was Mott's Levin again who worked with Edling in the Abstract Algebra and Crux and even sung on demos that were eventually found on the Dumology box set, who also featured Doogie White that was the final vocalist for Rainbow, Richard Blackmore's Rainbow, and that would do like Mott's Levin do in the solo material. And also features Tony Martin, who was in Black Sabbath and who made a fantastic solo album this year. If you haven't listened to that album, Check it out, I made a review of it. Also, keyboardist Pure Wigberg, Wigberg, ex-opeth and spiritual beggars, joined for live shows. In January of 2013, they were voted for the greatest Swedish metal band of all time, within two to being in second. Critics claimed that Psalms will be their last album, however, Edling denied those claims, saying that they were working on new material. And then... 2018 comes around. The band would, would announce the return of Johan Lindquist. After a 32-year hiatus, he comes back to the band. And in 2019, we get the door to doom. This is one of the best comeback albums I've ever heard. Now, the self-titled album was more of a... Comeback in terms of they haven't released an album in that many years. This is more of a comeback in terms of Johan. Because he has not in the band for over three decades. Insane, insane, insane. This album is absolutely amazing. From the opening Savage of Splendor, Demon, Majesty. This album is just... Booming throughout in, in great, great, great songs. Under the Ocean, Death's Wheel, House of Doom, and the doomy metal opus of the Omega Circle. But my favorite is a song that got me into this band, A Starless, The Great Octopus, that features Tony Iommi, the man himself that created this entire genre, doing a solo, and it's probably one of his best solos, in his entire career, Bite Me. Fantastic album. This is a great album. I think Banger TV says this was almost metal album of the year, I think. Fantastic album. It was a fantastic album. So they did the uh, Pendulum EP, the Pendulum EP in 2020, but there would be possibly a new album either this year or next year in 2023. Only fate would decide for that. So... That being said, folks, that closed the door on this doomy discography of the almighty Candlemas. Hope you guys enjoyed making this video. Next time on the Metal Month Retrospective, I'm going over a death metal band that people enjoy and give credit for their earlier album, but I feel like nobody talks about their other stuff. I'm talking about a band that kind of gets overlooked in some ways. I'm talking about Obituary. I'll talk about it in the next video. Peace out.